Hello and welcome to Reese Adventures. Today I'm going to be doing a camera review on the camera that I use and the one I've been using for the past year or so and that I took to the Himalayas with me. First things first, New Zealand, quick update. Um, it's nearly three weeks till I go now, I'm really, really excited. Um, managed to contact the airline yesterday and it's all finally through, finally sorted. I've had a bit of trouble for the past couple of months with the airline but luckily now we've progressed through that and I'm really really looking forward to it. I just can't wait to get out there, cycle all the way around the South Island and really get on with this channel and see what there is to see. Let's get another review. So this is it. This is the Olympus TG4 Tough Camera. Now it's a brilliant camera, it's waterproof and it's shock resistant. Um, it's shock resistant to 2.1 meters and it's waterproof to 15 meters. Now the waterproof rating I haven't fully tested itself um, but I have done a lot of shots underwater and I can guarantee that as long as all the uh, battery compartments on it are shut then it's brilliant to go and it's a lovely camera for underwater the clarity you get is nonetheless the same as if you were above land um, obviously if the water is clear that is and the shock rating um, I can speak from experience about the shock rating because the amount of times I've dropped this on boulder fields on mountainous terrain and it's still with me it still survived in fact just a few weeks ago I was cycling with it and it was on my, the, uh, the front of my bike and it fell straight off hit the road and um, the only damage from it is a few chips on the side of the camera so it really is the shockproof rating it says and probably a bit more as well. Now the first piece of advice I give for this camera is get a screen protector for the back of that screen because I didn't and I've ended up with the odd few scratch scratches on it and I wish I had because don't forget this screen is scratch resistant not scratch proof um, and it does kind of show when you're out I mean the amount of times I have dropped this and it has scratched sadly and not major scratches only tiny tiny ones but they do annoy you now and then so I get a screen protector for the back of it but apart from that I can't fault this camera now it comes in two colours this is the red version obviously uh, you can also get black I went for the red because as the man who sold it me suggested if you get the red, you're never going to lose that camera pretty much. Um, when you're in your kit and it's dark at night and you're looking through all your kits to try and get your camera, you don't want it to be black. So the red is super cool and to be fair, you're never going to lose that. It comes with a nice hand strap to hold it onto. I've added a bit of green paracord as well to give it a bit of pizzazz. Now it's also got a GPS feature and a Wi-Fi setting um, which take place in the actual top of the camera. So the Wi-Fi is so that you can connect this to any mobile device that you want. This connects to your phone, this connects to your tablet, it connects to your computer and you can transfer photos and videos straight across and actually that import service is really fast with certain phones. I found that iPhones it works better with, Android can be a bit laggy and a bit slower but generically that Wi-Fi service is great and to be fair to have that accessibility straight to your phone is brilliant. The GPS system is so you can actually geographically tag photos in the area you're in. So when I was in the Himalayas, I was able to geographically tag where I was and I've been able to go on my camera, look back and plot my route and where I walked based on photos. And I think that's a really, really cool feature. And especially if you just want to know the coordinates of your area or where you are or where's north, you can get compasses and all sorts of stuff um, on the camera itself. Now, I will go through what it has on it. It has quite a few different settings as you can see so the first one is obviously the auto setting that's really good for just a quick snap quick photo it's got a scene setting now the scene setting has got absolutely multiple scenes on it's got fireworks it's got sunsets it's got absolutely it can take beautiful photos this camera can it, it is really a work of art i have to say um the next one that's really interesting to me is the microscope setting i don't know if you can see that but the microscope setting i'll put a photo up now picture of some moss I've just taken and you can see how clear that photo is and it's really great for getting those close-up shots that you wouldn't usually get. Also I've took a few photos of insects and things like that and that's what the setting is really great for. It's also got an underwater mode which kind of makes it a bit more optical and puts it into a fish's perspective but that works underwater due to how the light hits and things like that. So this camera is really great at compensating for all these different external factors that can affect um, what it can do. Now, what I quite like about it is as a digital camera, it actually works quite well as a DSLR. Now, obviously DSLRs are really advanced cameras and you can mess around with them so much, but so can you with this one. 
Now, the amount of settings that you can get on this, you can customise it beyond belief, and most digital cameras um, wouldn't actually pick up pictures of the stars and things like that because you can't mess with the settings to that degree. This camera can, and I've actually got a few photos from when I've been out of the stars, and if you mess around with it enough and you really faff with the settings and know what you're on about, then this camera can really, really work for you. But again, as I said, you've really got to look into it and you've got to know what you're doing um, to get photos like that. So that is a bit of a downside, but if you've got the time, then you can look into it and it's not that difficult once you learn how to do it. I mean, I've learned how to do it now. I learned it in about a couple of days and finally I mastered it and I can now take photos of the stars and I've saved that as a, as a custom setting. I think it's uh, it's on custom, custom 2 and that's really great and I can use that at any time I want. So those are pretty much a lot of the settings on it. It's also got more. I mean, you can faff around with the megapixels, you can mess with the frame size, you can all sorts of stuff. But really, this camera, it's just brilliant. It films in 4K as well, which is it's brilliant. The file sizes might be big in 4K, admittedly, but they're worth it because they're so, so clear. And I mean, a lot of the videos I take, I wouldn't be able to get without this camera because it's just an all-round. You can take it absolutely everywhere. Anything I do, I know this camera will be good. I've got a camera case for it, of course, to keep it safe. And the speakers on the top, they're not the best at times. Um, in high wind, obviously, you do struggle a lot. I mean, I've sometimes in high winds, I've had the camera kind of this far away from my face, and it's actually struggles to pick up what I'm saying. But then again, it's a camera, not a microphone, so I'll let it off on that one. And when you play back things on the camera, these stereos are really, really clear. But the actual microphone itself, I think, could be uh, developed more to what it is. So if I just switch it on give you a, a bit of an idea so there we go there's me you've got all the settings down here at the moment this is on the setting I've got it for stars um, and that's really really cool so if I flip that round custom one I haven't got custom one setting anything at the moment so there's the I auto mode there you go lovely photo of me there Keep flipping it around. There's just so much you can do with this. There is there is kind of unlimited. And if you go actually to the scene mode that I was just on there, and as you can see, there's just so much you can do with this camera. And in terms of if I had to rate it out of 10 on so many things. I'd definitely give it an 8 out of 10 as a camera. I just think it's brilliant. It does everything you need it to do. You know, there's a few things that I could improve, which is why I can't give it the 10 out of 10. The microphone, for instance, needs improving. I think potentially the scratch proofing on the back could be better for the glass. But then again, I'm a bit rough with the camera, so it could just be me. You'll have to test it out for yourself. But everything, the GPS, the Wi-Fi, and the value of this camera as well. I mean, I bought this camera a year ago, and I bought it for about £300. I think it's gone down now. You're probably looking at about £200, £250 for this sort of camera. And it's so, so worth the money. I mean, a lot of people buy GoPros for this sort of stuff. But I think this does a hell of a lot more than a GoPro. And it's so much better value for money. So there we go. That is the Olympus TG4 Tough Camera Review by Reese's Adventures. As I said, subscribe and like the video below. Keep following this channel if you want to see more. And I'll see you soon, guys.